A wonderful feeling in chess happens when you can place a piece on a great square that controls key enemy squares and your opponent cannot easily remove that piece. We call that square an outpost. An outpost is a square that cannot be attacked by an enemy pawn. The best outpost squares are those that control many key squares on your opponent's side of the board and are protected by one of your own pawns. The most effective outpost piece is usually the knight. Let's take a look at this position. White's knight is eyeing two attractive looking squares in black's territory. d5 and f5. Which square should the knight choose? If white plays knight to f5, the knight is anchored by the pawn on e4. But notice this is not an effective outpost square because black can attack the knight with a pawn. In this case, with g6. Black's dark squares are a little weakened by this move, but shouldn't be the end of the world in this endgame. White's knight had a much better square to use as an outpost. Let's take a look. A far better move is knight to d5. The knight lands on an excellent outpost square, where no pawns can attack it. The knight is posted in the center of the board, and controls many key squares in Black's camp including threatening a fork on b6. Notice that if black plays rook to c5, the knight doesn't have to move because it is worth less than the rook. This is another reason why knights are such strong outpost pieces. Once they take over an outpost square, it is very difficult to remove them. We should mention that white could place another piece on the d5 outpost with queen to d5. But it is not useful because black can force it to move away with rook to c5. Let's take a look at another example. In this position, white has a tremendous outpost square for the knight on d5. If white is in too much of a rush and jumps into d5 immediately with knight to d5, white will regret that decision after knight takes d5. Eliminating white's knight and revealing the dark squared bishop's attack on white's bishop. If white tries to save the bishop with bishop takes e7, black wins a piece after knight takes e7. White should first secure the outpost square by playing bishop takes f6, removing the guard of the d5 square, the knight. After bishop takes f6, the d5 square has been cleared for white's knight, and after knight to d5, white's knight is wonderfully placed in the center threatening a fork on b6, and attacking the bishop on f6. White has a great position. In this position, black has a very strong outpost square available in white's kingside. Do you see it? That's right, the f4 square. After knight to h5, black's knight heads to f4 and opens up the rook's attack on f3. After queen to e3, protecting the pawn, Black's knight leaps into the f4 outpost with knight to f4. Black is now threatening queen to g5 check and queen to g2 checkmate. So white is forced to play king to h1. White opens a space for the rook on g1 to help protect the king. But after queen to h4, black's pieces invade white's weak kingside with an overwhelming advantage. One idea is to play the rook left Rook to f5 and rook to h5, threatening checkmate on h2. White will have a very difficult time trying to survive. Let's take a look at one more position together. In this position, it's black to move. If you were able to move your knight anywhere on the board, where would you like it to be? It's hard to find a better square than e3, where it would be planted in the heart of white's position and also forking the queen and rook. But how can the knight get there? If you found the excellent move d4, great job! This move attacks white's rook, clears open the d5 square for the black knight, and prepares to support a knight outpost on e3 or c3. White should retreat the rook to c1 when black has a tremendous positional advantage after knight d5 and knight to e3. But white may try to play the tricky rook to c4. 
preparing to capture the d4 pawn the moment black plays knight to d5. Remember to never trust your opponent's threats without double checking them first. And in this case, white's threat of taking the pawn is a bluff. Black confidently plays knight to d5. When white should move the queen out of danger and allow black to play knight e3. But white plays rook takes d4. Can you see what white overlooked? White captured a pawn, but the unprotected rook is on the same diagonal as white's king. After queen to b6, white tries to protect the rook with queen to a1. And black simply wins a rook after knight f6. Revealing a second attacker against white's pinned rook, the rook on d8. Now that you've learned the power of outposts, it's time to put your knowledge to the test.